In what may be the hottest year in history, scientists have recorded radical changes to the permafrost in Antarctica. The Pandora virus, a so-called giant virus with the largest genome size ever recorded. The crabs also display increased aggression, even towards larger predators. A striking new weather anomaly has claimed many coastlines around the world. NASA is examining these clouds to figure out... We've detected large amounts of an organic composite. So far, the sample doesn't match any of the DNA records we've compared it with. We all saw it. Those creatures coming out of the sea on that oil rig. The president has declared a national emergency... It's obvious that what we're dealing with here is a biological weapon. As of today, we are at war. It's taking their minds. I saw them walk right into the sea. Thousands of people. Thousands. The mist is gone, but the city is dead. The roads are broken. You must join one of the havens. Do not attempt to survive on your own. Hey, Redcon Raider here, and welcome to Phoenix Point. Now, we've been waiting almost three years for this, and I've basically already shared my thoughts over in my recent overview so we're going to be jumping in shortly. First though, uh, I've got to say, I did not expect to still be making videos when this game finally came out, so um, thanks for that. <laughs> you guys keep watching my videos and uh, I guess I'll keep making them. I'd also like to give special thanks to Mike Spark and Valen Rook, who actually went so far as to sponsor this series through Patreon. Thanks for your support, guys. That said, let's get started. Now, against my better judgment, I will be going with the hero difficulty for this playthrough, even though uh, during the pre-release I played the normal difficulty and I actually thought that was plenty challenging enough. If nothing else, this should certainly be interesting. Oh, uh... I'm also going to keep the tutorial enabled. It is pretty heavily scripted and it doesn't really carry over to the rest of the game, but it does have some story content, so I figure it's worth going through. I will try to keep it quick, though. My name is Randolph Symes. I am the last leader of the Phoenix Project. If you are hearing this, I am most likely dead. But in happier news, a scarab has been sent to pick you up, and its artificial intelligence will take you to Phoenix Point. Get to it quickly and safely. Okay, here we are. Like I said, this is pretty heavily scripted, so I'm mostly just going through the motions. Feel free to pause the screen if you'd like to actually read any of these tutorials. Hostile! There's our sacrificial crab men. Minor hit there, but you can't actually die during the first part of the tutorial. Confirming target. On my way. This is a terrible move. You never want to rush a soldier ahead like this. Not if you want to keep them alive. Making haste. Hey, we actually have control here. 
Receiving lot. Took one down. Not too shabby. go. All right, that's part one of the tutorial. Let's do this. Sadly, we uh, don't actually get to keep this scarab. It's purely here for the story. I guess that would be a bit much. There's some experience points we don't actually get to keep. Moving on. If you are hearing this message, an alert has been triggered and you will need to clear out the enemy forces. There may be others who receive this signal. Help them if you can. It's all up to you now. Good luck, operatives. Symes out. Okay, part two of the tutorial. I think this is the uh, last completely scripted part. Moving now. Alright, we are once again rushing our soldier out into the open. Targets in sight! Yeah, that seems about right. Just a side note here, but that would have actually killed us if this wasn't the tutorial. Let's do this. Now, this part of the tutorial is actually pretty interesting. It teaches you about activating allies on the battlefield, but in the uh, pre-release version, it was only really used to activate civilians. It makes me wonder if we're finally going to see some uh, actual allied defenders in future content updates. Hmm. Not crazy about that move, but the heavy is basically drawing fire. Probably. <laughs> 
Oh. Yeah, the heavy's got 30 armor, so he can get away with that kind of move this early in the game. The aliens get stronger over time, though. You try that later, the heavy will get torn to pieces. Again, that guy would be super dead. Confirming. Engaging. Steady. minutes. Not bad. The Phoenix Project was founded on October 24th, 1945. The Second War to end all wars was over, but there were those who understood that we could no longer afford to think in terms of nations and empires. For a time, the Phoenix Project successfully navigated the political conflicts of its era. That was our golden age. Phoenix Project operatives scoured the world for clues. We had bases in two dozen countries. Even the heavens were not off limits. But out there, on the far side of the moon, began our downfall. The failure of the Phoenix 2 mission exposed us to our enemies in the UN. Stripped of resources and scattered to the winds, we were reduced to a secret, a memory. When the Pandora virus woke up, we should have been the first line of defense. When huge clouds of mist appeared over the sea, when people started vanishing, we should have figured out what was going on. And when those people started coming back, changed, hostile, alien, we should have been ready to fight, but we failed. The ecosystem started to change, imperceptibly at first, then faster and faster. Three factions arose. New Jericho, trying to restore order and purity. Sinedrin, hoping to build a world without hierarchies. And the Disciples of Anu, a new syncretic religion dedicated to adaptation and biological change. At war with the world and at odds with each other, these factions cannot find a way forward. Now the mist is returning and armies are rising from the sea. Without the Phoenix Project, humanity will fall. It's time to rise from the ashes. And now for the Geoscape portion of the tutorial. This is pretty straightforward. There's our first base. You don't normally have to repair it right off the bat, but they did give us some extra supplies just for this. Hmm. Four unusable slots. That's not ideal. And 
now we wait. Normally you'd want to multitask while you're doing something like this, but uh, this is the tutorial. Alright, Manticore is finally online. We can get this party started. Let's see what we've got. Right, we uh, have to actually scan the site before we can land there. I think that takes about five or six hours. Ah, huh, and there's our first scavenging site. I think they uh, actually take the training wheels off on this one. Yeah, we, uh, we actually have full control here. I think that means we can actually die, so let's proceed with caution. Crab man in sight. Oh, and they are not starting us off easy. That is an Agile Gunner. Frail, but deadly. Let's see if we can uh, get lucky here. Overwatching. What's our plan? Shoot. Alright, we'll do this the hard way. I'm on Overwatch. On my way. was afraid of that. Oh, here we go. Nice. Yeah, hanging back and setting up overwatch traps is definitely safer, but you're really going to pay for it on a map like this one. They don't know we're here, so they're just going to keep blowing up resource pickups. We'll have to uh, move up a bit more aggressively, see if we can get their attention. I'm here. Hmm. We've got two groups. It's risky, but let's try splitting up here. The sooner we pull them off those containers, the better. Confirming target. Not much damage, but... <laughs> Let's hope that got his attention. Use 
Zing. Sprinting to position. All right, let's see what happens. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll give them uh, credit for not being easily distracted. Let's see if we can uh, actually save some of these supplies. Oh, hey, they uh, added an icon to the capture points. That's new. Contact. Oh, we've got a mind fragger on the field. That slows us down. So close. All right, let's break line of sight here. Hopefully, he'll waste his turn chasing us. To position. Acquiring target. Oh, nice. Okay. There we go. One less thing to worry about. And that is our fourth crate lost, I think. All right, we've, uh, we've lost about half the crates at this point, so we really need to stem this bleeding. Shoot, I shouldn't have gone so far down the stairs. Okay, so this guy basically has Going. to come outside. I think we've got him. Overwatching. I see them. Hmm. Oh, hey. Looks like one of them did waste his turn coming after us. Heading out. Finally. That just leaves the uh, two on the other side. Yeah, 
We're not going to walk away with much on this one. Let's roll. Confirming target. <laughs> oh my goodness. You have got to be kidding me. All right, well, so, uh, yeah, that happened. I wouldn't normally send a sniper up close like this, but we are out of options. Moving to position. Okay, one left. Sprinting. Let's wrap this up. We got him. Okay, we uh, actually walked away with four crates. That's actually not that bad. Oh, hey, we actually got some decent loot drops, too. Nothing fantastic, but we can actually use most of this stuff. And there's our post-battle tutorial. Pretty straightforward, but it is worth noting the uh, stamina mechanic. Basically, uh, every turn your soldiers spend in battle costs them one point of stamina. If their stamina gets too low, then they start suffering major penalties. So it's uh, good to make sure they spend some time back at base every once in a while. Speaking of which... Ah, I think it's almost time to customize our soldiers. Let's get through this real quick, and I'll break out the waiting list. It is worth noting that I'm pretty sure these default names all come from high-tier backers from the original crowdfunding campaign. My name should be in there somewhere, but I haven't actually seen it just yet. There's our equipment tutorial. Let's get some spare ammo and med packs equipped, though we will have to keep an eye on our encumbrance. There's our training tutorial, though we don't actually have any level ups just yet. Now, I don't think they've really changed the classes since the pre-release version, but I will have to uh, spend some time familiarizing myself with it between episodes. Oh, hold on. Okay, they have completely redone the personal perk track. 
none of this was in the press build. Huh. Wow, okay, uh, I don't want it to bog us down right now, but yeah, I'm definitely going to have to take a closer look at that, too. There's our research tutorial, pretty straightforward if you've played any XCOM game in the past. <laughs> Not a lot of options here, so we'll start with Atmospheric Analysis. We have managed to connect to some of the remaining weather satellites. We should use these to assess the extent of the new mist outbreak. Sounds like a plan. And once again, we wait. Research complete. Atmospheric analysis. Reprogramming of our satellite systems has revealed the extent of the new mist outbreak. The origin sites are in coastal sea regions, as in the previous two incursions, but the activity level seems higher, posing a serious threat to remaining life on Earth. Havens caught within the mist will be at risk of attack, so we should explore mist-covered regions thoroughly and defend any havens trapped within them. Our geoscape monitoring systems have been updated with current mist coverage. Yeah, the uh, mist is a pretty major part of the game. It starts off small, but over time, it'll slowly spread across the map. Wherever the mist goes, the aliens can build their bases, and then they'll use those to stage attacks on other nearby locations. It's up to the player to uh, try to keep that in check. Also worth noting that any missions you take in a mist zone will be much more difficult than normal. And then we've got the manufacturing tutorial, which again is pretty self-explanatory. The main thing to remember here though is that you can only produce one thing at a time, so you have to plan out your manufacturing accordingly. Fortunately, certain things like med kits or ammunition can be produced instantaneously so you'll never run out of consumable items, as long as you have the materials for them. And that finally brings us to satellite uplinks, which are your primary means of exploring the world around you. That's how you'll discover additional points of interest to explore. As the tutorial says, you just have to move to a node and activate a scan, though it uh, does cost a small amount of resources to actually trigger the scan, and it will take several hours for the scan to actually complete. Huh. We're actually pretty close to Australia. That's one of the harder locations to get to, just like Antarctica. Yeah, okay. We're in a pretty good starting position. Oh, uh, also worth noting, the cost of a scan is influenced by your difficulty setting, so keep that in mind. And that's pretty much it for the tutorial. Not too bad. A little silly towards the beginning with the heavily scripted battles, but it is what it is. 
More notably, that finally gives us access to the Phoenixpedia, which is essentially the in-game manual. Not only does it give us definitions for various basic game terms, but it also explains a lot of the mechanics and uh, acts as a repository for all the information we gather throughout the course of our campaign. It's even got a lore section enabled now, where it gives us basic crib notes on various characters from the uh, pre-launch fiction. It's not as good as actually reading those stories, but it will at least give you a good idea of who you're talking to. Anyway, now that we're done with the tutorial, I can finally customize our squad. Not that I have any problem with these guys. I mean, they helped fund the game, so I certainly respect them for that. But I've got my own waiting list to go through, so let's hit the pause button, I'll break out the list, and uh, we'll be right back. And we're back. I customized our soldiers, and uh, I took a moment to study all those new perks, so let's have a quick look. First up, we've got Valenrook, who's uh, got the Thief perk. Interesting, but not really a great fit for him. He already moves slow enough. Slightly more promising, though, is Cautious which actually has some interesting synergy with Reckless, his other personal perk. Individually, one focuses on damage over accuracy and the other on accuracy over damage, but if we end up getting both of them, those accuracy modifiers will cancel each other out and uh, he'll just end up with a plus 20% universal damage bonus, which is pretty fantastic for a heavy. The only real downside is that it'll cost him 50 skill points, which is basically an entire level up. Not sure we'll go for it, but it's definitely worth considering. If we just end up going for one of them, I'd probably go with Cautious. There's not much point in boosting damage if you can't actually hit. Then we've got Eoftar, the squad sniper. And again, he's got some very interesting options when it comes to his personal track. He's got Barmbadir, which grants him proficiency with back-mounted weapons, as well as a hefty 20% bonus to range and damage. And he's got access to Quarterback, which grants him longer throwing range, and a flat plus two bonus to speed, which is very nice. Between the two of them, that would basically turn him into a sniper with both explosives and rifles. That's a pretty solid combination. The downside being that, again, it would be very expensive, and we won't actually be seeing back-mounted weapons for quite some time. The only one I'm not sure about is, ironically, Sniperist, which would grant him a pretty hefty plus 25% bonus to sniper damage, but it comes at the cost of 4 willpower, which is pretty massive. That's basically the equivalent of 40 skill points worth of willpower, which is on top of the 25 skill points the ability would also cost. That's more expensive than both of the other perks combined. I have to say, it is pretty tempting to go for all three of them. If we do, though, we would basically have to skip dual classing. He just wouldn't have enough skill points for both. Next up, we've got Mike Spark, the first of our assaults. And he gets early access to Close Quarters Specialist, which grants him the melee proficiency as well as a plus 20% damage bonus with both shotguns and melee. Now, I will say that uh, shotguns and melee can be pretty effective, especially this early in the campaign. 
It is very high risk, high reward though, and it might end up becoming less and less useful as the enemies grow more powerful. Still, it's a good early investment, so we'll almost certainly end up picking it up. Of course, all that extra gear would end up weighing him down, which is why it's good he also eventually gets access to the Resourceful perk, which both drastically improves his carrying capacity and boosts his strength, which would increase his hit points and his melee damage. That's some pretty good synergy right there. This one, though. I'm not really crazy about Strongman. I will say, uh, the heavy cannon can make for a very powerful shotgun equivalent, especially with that plus 30% damage bonus. But that minus 10 perception is, uh, pretty huge. Essentially, it means he'd be practically blind, only good at point-blank range. I don't want to dismiss it outright, but um, I will have to give that some serious thought. And finally, that brings us to Aloise, our other assault, who uh, starts with a much easier choice, Trooper, which grants a flat plus 20% bonus to damage and accuracy with assault rifles. He'll be using those pretty much all the time, so that's a no-brainer. And then, much like Mike Spark, he gets access to Strongman, which, again, we'll probably be skipping. And he finally gets access to Close Quarters Specialist, but not until level 7, at which point shotguns might be mostly obsolete, so we'll have to see what the circumstances are, or if he even survives to hit level 7 in the first place. Anyway, that's our starting squad. Let's go set up our research. Now, obviously, we're going to need more than just four soldiers, so I think we should prioritize Haven Recruitment Protocols. The leader of a reconnaissance team has proposed that we attempt to recruit capable people from the Havens. They might not share the technological know-how of Phoenix Project operatives, but have been battle-hardened by the horrors of the world. Well, I'll be honest here. We'll take whatever we can get. Okay, we've got a little time left, so uh, let's check out this point of interest. The Fire Within At the Disciples of Anu Haven of Nippur, a mutated worm infestation is causing serious problems. The locals had placed their hopes in Taxiarch Nergal, the Disciples' greatest military hero. But Nergal is said to be fighting a series of pitched battles against the Pandorans and has been unable to help. We could eradicate the infestation ourselves, helping the Haven and creating a good first impression with this faction. Yeah, okay. I think that's actually the easiest of the three introductory faction missions. Let's get in there. We already know that our soldiers are equipped, but it is warning us that Valen has some empty slots. You know what? Let's give him a grenade. Here we are. This map might look familiar if you uh, watched my series about Backer Build 5. It's prettier, but it's basically the same map. Oh, 
Well, first things first. Let's see if we can uh, get some eyes in the sky. Ah. Uh, Eoftar can't quite move far enough. Well, let's have a peek. Hmm, that's not too bad. Let's see if we can get lucky here. Enemy contact. <laughs> oh well. Advancing. I think we'll just have to make our stand where we are. Let's get eyes on that building. There's almost certainly a couple hiding inside. On my way. The trick here is, we want to be close enough to actually hit these things, but we don't want them to get too close. I'm on the move. This early in the campaign, getting lit on fire is basically a death sentence. Okay, so far so good. No one's exploded. Let's keep picking at these guys. Ready to fire. <laughs> Eoftar, you are not off to a good start. See? That's how you do it. Though, uh, I will admit, that might have been slight overkill. You'll notice I'm uh, waiting for these things to finish inhaling before I actually take my shot. These things are so small, we need every advantage we can get. Acquiring target. All right, fingers crossed. Okay, yeah, I think we're good. What's our plan? Five by five. There we go. We'll just have uh, Eoftar stick to the rifle for now. Advancing. Ready to fire. Overwatching. Let's 
Let's do this. I think we're just about done here. What's our plan? I think we've just got the one left. Let's uh, hedge our bets here. Overwatching. Threat eliminated. Wow, flawless victory and level ups for everyone. Very nice. Normally, when we encounter a potential ally, we first send the Apostle to the Onceborn to check them out. But I'm going to break protocol to say thanks. Now listen, I'll be honest with you. The Exalted is the only one who has any real answers. Tobias West may be clever and Sinedrian may sound great, but only the Exalted is dealing with the world as it actually is. She can lead us out of this mess. Give us lives worth living. Now, normally I'd choose one or two factions to ally with, and then we'd work against whoever's left. In this case, though, my patrons have uh, actually asked me to ally with no one, so... We'll mostly be keeping our distance. Sorry, we're not ready to put our faith in your dogma. Very well. I don't blame you. It's hard to see the right path sometimes. I hope you recognize it while there's still time. The liturgy of the divine flesh is coming, whether you like it or not. <laughs> Fair enough. Glad we could help. Now, obviously, um, we're going to try to avoid antagonizing these guys too early. We do need them for recruits. Phoenix Project. I've heard a lot about you people. Most of it weird. Science nerds with guns, huh? Well, I've heard worse ideas. Anyway, here's the inside scoop on New Jericho. Tobias West? 
probably a genius. He might be a bit crazy, but he has a plan. And a real plan is a heck of a lot better than all that touchy-feely crap at Sanhedrin or whatever the hell those squid-worshipping disciples are up to. So stick with us, and maybe we'll die, or maybe we'll win. But either way, it'll be fun. Huh. You know, I've uh, never had New Jericho reach out to me like that. This will definitely give me a chance to see some new content. Anyway, let's push our luck here. Let's go for one more node. Oh, right, we've got those level ups to take care of first. We are playing in hero mode. We need every advantage we can get. Oh, uh, this is actually worth mentioning. For the most part, the class abilities were rebalanced a little, but they weren't really changed all that much. With the one exception being the heavy here, who lost their body slam ability and had it replaced with Brawler, which grants a passive bonus to melee and bashing damage. It's not bad, but uh, this early on, we're just not mobile enough to really take advantage of it. We'll just grab Cautious instead. That accuracy bonus will come in handy, and then we'll dump the rest of our points into willpower and speed. Yeah, I think that's good. Then we've got Eoftar, and, uh... Again, uh, Bombardier is useful, but we're not going to be seeing any back mount weapons for quite some time. We will pick up Extreme Focus, though. That one's pretty much indispensable. And again, we'll uh, put the rest of the points into Willpower and Speed. Then we've got Mike Spark, and uh, we don't have any shotguns just yet, but we should be able to get them pretty quickly. And we will, of course, take Dash, which has been nerfed since the uh, pre-release builds, but it's still pretty useful. And Aloise. He'll get Dash, and will boost his stats. Okay, let's check out that node. Ah, an abandoned haven. Well, the uh, free resources are still welcome. All 30 of them. All right, folks. I am tempted to go for another node, but we're already past the hour mark anyway, so I should really hit the pause button. I've still got a couple of hours worth of editing before this thing is actually watchable. We'll hit the pause button for now, but we'll pick up here next time as we continue exploring the world around Phoenix Point and uh, introduce ourselves to the other two human factions. See you then. Kaiser, I'm right here. <laughs> Come here, sweetheart. Hey, cutie. Oh, and remember, although I do love playing Phoenix Point, you can find out more about the game by visiting the official website, the official YouTube channel, the official Discord server, the official Facebook page, the official Twitter feed, or the original crowdfunding campaign over on Fig. As always, links are in the description. <laughs>